This is to illustrate what I'm actually attempting to do. This is the angle of the plug hole and likewise I, for simplicity reasons, angled the compression release hole machining parallel to the plug hole which makes measurement much easier. Plug hole was set over at 30 degrees so the decompressor machinings will be set over to 30 degrees likewise. The, the wide cut-in at the top, the clearance for the socket to fit the decompressor, will just enter the surface at the shallowest end. And this is the sequence here that I'll be using. Now, as you as you already seen, the I've taken the eighth inch hole through the head. That one's completed now. Right, and the next operation is going to be to cut the large recess here, which will take the body of the decompressible screw down onto, and I'll be able to have a clearance there fit for a socket to fit over and into the recess clearance. So I need a 19mm mill for that recess. What I want to explain now is what I'm actually doing with the coin. Now, ha having machined this 19mm recess, I won't know actually how deep that land is until I've just pierced the outside surface of the head on, that, on the shallow end of the slant. If you see what I mean. So, I end up with this situation here where we got the large recess machine. Now I want to bore it down with um, the drill. Taking into account of the angle of the drill, I want to come down exactly 17.5 millimeters. Now how I do that from that land there is I can place a penny, a, a, a coin for instance, or a blank washer in that hole. I can bring the drill point down to touch that disc or the coin, zero the z-axis, remove the coin, measure the thickness of the coin, let's just say it's two millimeter thick, compensate for that two mil, move the quill down another two mil, and uh, it will be perfectly in line with the land. Then I can zero the axis again, and from then I can go down exactly 17.5 millimeter. The same again with the, the blunt, I call it the blunt drill, it's a, it's a drill is to, is to take out the corner, this corner is left here. The blunt drill is going to take out that corner. And that one has got to come down from that surface exactly 16.5 millimetres. And again I'll use the coin to, to perform that operation. So the final result will be with this one with a five millimeter point five millimeter gap at the bottom for this the head of this valve to operate and don't forget um, the washer is I'm accounting for the washer as well a copper washer that's underneath the, the head of the decompressor so that's uh, that explains what the operations I'm doing is actually achieving. Alright, this is part 6, head machining. Here's a better shot here of the, um, of the 19mm end mill cutting the first recess. 
Having completed in the previous episode the, the eighth inch hole or the 3.12 millimeter hole right through the head to the combustion chamber. So I'm cutting out the recess now with a 19 millimeter end mill. I'm cutting it in, down until it just pierces the surface of the head at the shallow end because it's going in at an angle so I've got a deep end in the shallow end. The shallow end will be nearest the plug hole. In this sequence of uh, clips I might be swapping between the front head and the rear head simply because of the clips I took. Some was uh, had better focus than others. Don't worry, the, the sequence of operations is going to be right. The recess is completed. Now I'm using the uh, this coin method here now to zero the z-axis. This is an 8.4 millimeter hole. This is slightly, just slightly, but the nearest drill undersized that I had for a 9 millimeter drill. Now we're taking the, the first drill down, 17.5 millimeters.
Now I'm doing the same operation again with the coin, but this time with a flat bottomed drill. Well, you only got cutting teeth on the extreme outer edge. And this is to take out the corner that I mentioned about. And this drill is a 9mm drill. So this one, the, the previous one had to go down 17.5 millimeters. This one got to go down 16.5. in a sharp uh, bit just to take the uh, sharp edge off the entry, the thread entry on the hole. So at this point I can start tapping the hole. Now these taps in themselves was a, well, not a nightmare, but you mustn't trust sources that say 10mm by 1mm tap, a spark plug tap. You'd probably end up with a very, very loose thread, loose tolerance thread. Now, um, I couldn't find special spark plug taps for 14mm, but I couldn't find any for 10mm. find them advertised, but I didn't trust the sources, so... Uh, like eBay for instance, I just didn't trust. So I bought several sets of 10 one taps. I even bought 9mm taps hoping to open them out but using 9mm serial taps. I've tried 10 millimeters serial taps. But the trouble is with serial taps, fine thread is two taps. The 
first one was, was undersized and the second one was oversized. When I out of ideas, I did buy a, a pair of vocal taps and um, on my test blocks that I drilled, to my surprise, it was a really nice close fit in thread, so it was a lottery. Searching online for Pacific plug taps. I'm not really sure whether they existed because the ones that was the best fit, the closest fit, wasn't advertised as plug taps or spark plug taps. And here the head is being removed from the rotary table. You can see the, the securing bolts and the plywood uh, that I used to improve the grip of the head on the rotary table. That's a completion of part six. The next part will be finalizing the head out off the mill outside where I can see it better. And that's the end of this session.